Okay, Jackie, looks like we're in business here. Yes, we are. Sorry, I had to get myself off mute. I was afraid I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was me. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Yeah, can hey, Jackie, that. just a heads up. This is Nolan. Um, I just started the recording and the live streaming. Um, so whenever you're ready to get started, I can go ahead with the slides. Okay. I need to quickly get my agenda on the board here so that I've got something to work off of. We have, uh, who all do we have here so far? I see. TJ's here. It looks like we have everybody. I see Ryan, Matt, Kim, uh, Judy, TJ, uh, Bart, and you. I think that's everyone, right? Uh, I see what's going on. I only got to see half the people here. Good. Well, then. We probably ought to get going. All right. So, with that, I'd like to call this meeting of the East Franklin Review Board to order. Uh, I gather that I will first of all be swearing in the staff. Uh, so, staff, if you will identify yourselves for the record. Sure, and um, Bill, would you mind if Nolan uh, reads through the intro slides really quick before we jump into the meeting? Yeah, we ought to probably is that on the. Yeah, we we need to put that on our agenda so I get at it. I miss it every every time. <laughs> Go ahead, That's a good Nolan. idea. That's a really good idea. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, just a quick uh, few things before we start. Um, all attendees are muted upon meeting entry, and you will be unmuted as appropriate. Um, the chair will call on participants to speak. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to send those questions to me, Nolan Harshaw. I'm the host of this meeting, um, and send those questions uh, via WebEx chat in the bottom right of your screen. Um, you will be required to have your video feature on if you are speaking. Uh, the meeting is being recorded uh, right now and being uh, streamed to YouTube live as well. Um, last but not least, comments received in the WebEx chat will not be part of the official public record. Um, so go ahead, applicants um, and speakers, go ahead and turn off your video um, and mute yourself at this time. Okay. And with that, let's, uh, uh, if, so, Nolan, you've identified yourself. If the other staff members in, in attendance would do the same. Uh, Dr. Yeoman? Are there any other staff members in attendance other than Jackie and, and Nolan? It's just the two of us today. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you swear or affirm that uh, the any testimony you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. Yeah. Nolan? I won't be speaking, but yes as well. Okay, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, then Jackie, if you'll call the roll, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. Fergus? Present. Dr. Box? Present. Mr. Szymanski? Present. <clears throat> Mr. Manfred? Present. Mr. Overly? Present. Mr. Way? Present. Mr. Egner? Present. Okay. So, uh, 
This is a, an announcement from the chair, uh, this is a public forum, persons wishing to address the board on matters not on the posted agenda are invited to do so. The board is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non-agenda items. Communication should be kept to a three minute limit. Um, and with that, uh, has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from our last meeting in March? And if so, I would entertain a motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve. approve. I'll second. Okay. If you make him. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to approve. Jackie, call the roll, please. Mr. Fergus? Approve. Dr. Box? Approve. Mr. Szymanski? Approve. Mr. Manfred? Approve. Mr. Overly? Mr. Overly? Approve. Mr. Way? Approve. Mr. Egner? Approve. Okay. Moving on. Uh, old business. We have one item. And this is application. EF 21030001, address is 491 West Town Street. The applicant is Kevin Kindy, Triad Architect. Uh, the owner is Zach Price, Sullivan Builders LLC, and we are reviewing a new Triad office building. Uh, Jackie, staff report, please. So 491 West Town Street is a vacant lot within the Arts Innovation Subdistrict. The applicant is proposing to build a three-story office building for their architecture firm with a seven-space permeable paver parking lot, landscape seating area um, along West Town Street. The materials for the building include masonry glass and corrugated metal panels. The parking lot screening from West Town and, and to the south of the parking lot will consist of three-foot-high horizontal wood fencing. At the March 2021 meeting, the board approved the use and parking reduction on the condition that the applicant would return for elevation, landscape, lighting, and material review. And that is the application today. Um, the application is generally consistent with the recommendations of the East Franklinton Creative Community District Plan. The plan recommends a wide range of architectural styles with preference for contemporary, contemporary building design and materials and for street level facades to be as transparent as possible. The zoning code calls for parking lots to be screened and that that screen shall be provided in a landscape area at least four feet in width and shall consist of a fence, fence, landscaped earth mound, wall, planking, or combination thereof, no less than three feet above uh, parking lot grade and a capacity of no less than 75%. Um, I was reading through this and I actually reached out to Belkis today. I think she might have missed a sentence here. Um, so this screening is being provided on two sides of the parking lot, um, but is not being provided on um, the side uh, near the alley, um, so the east side, and um, but staff is still recommending approval. Okay, any questions for staff? Okay, Kim. Uh, Jackie, I just want to confirm that what the regulations say is that the screening is a minimum of three feet. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Right. So, we're, so what they're proposing is the minimal height required. Um, yes. What they are proposing on West Town and, and the south um, side of the parking lot would be uh, the minimum required. Of course, uh, this would fall under uh, one of the uh, standards that the board can modify and so, you know, the board can approve what they think is appropriate and, and that'll fall under a development modification if um, for the side, the uh, east side that is not being screened. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, if the uh, representatives for the applicant would identify themselves, please. Hi, this is Kevin Kindy from Triad Architects. Is and then uh, Brent Foley's on as well from my office. He's 
Sorry, <laughs> just muted myself. Brent Foley from Triad Architects and Sullivan Brothers. Okay, uh, it's just the two of you. Looks like it. Doesn't look okay. like Zach's joining us, so we can we can handle it though. Thank you. All right, all right, gentlemen. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, yeah, I do. Okay, floor is yours. Proceed. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I wanted to touch base on is uh, just to remind everybody the reason we're not proposing screening on that east side is uh, the parking lot uh, that we've got shown is abutting directly with the alley that's on that east side, and we are. Uh, we have to use basically a combination of that alley and the parking lot to uh, provide our aerial access lane for the fire department. Um, and so there just there wasn't enough room to fit that aerial access lane in with the parking lot screening. So I think we touched on that last month, but I don't know that that part was up for uh, you know official review and vote. But just like I said, just wanted to remind everybody that that's the reason it's not provided on the east side. Um, and then we did add screening along the north side between parking lot and town street. The screening on the south side um, hasn't changed. I think we had that in there last time as well. So, yeah, we're here today to seek full approval on the site layout and the building. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. We're happy to answer any questions. All right. Does the uh, we have any questions for the applicant? So I, I do have a question. The can you maybe go into detail of what is being done up front in terms of that what looks like a swiggly bench or um because i know we talked about that last month on how that was being programmed yeah so um what we're currently showing is the two trees uh two of the the two of the, or sorry those trees are part of our tree replacement for trees that uh, had to be removed from the site to make way for the building um and due to just trees that we had to eliminate due to age and condition um and so yeah we've got those two trees um we're proposing a serpentine type park bench uh, there as well. And then the coded note 17 that's to the south of that, that's our uh, wood fence screen uh, between the parking lot and, and the right of way. And you can kind of tell from the elevations, I think, or the 3D views, that's proposed to be like a horizontal wood member fence. Uh, similar to other newer developments in the Franklinton area. For instance, um, the patio area at uh, Land Grant has a similar style wood fence. So it seemed like that was kind of the precedent for that type of screening um, that's used elsewhere on newer developments. And, and Jack, I, I bring this up, maybe you you could comment on this. I, I, I know from personal experience been slapped on the wrist many times by the city for putting permanent structures into the right of way. And I don't know how this bench fits in there. I, I, I like the design, it, but I, I could see if that doesn't get approved on how that area yeah, gets. That's a really good question. And, and the applicant could probably speak to whether they've um, had conversations with the Department of Public Service yet, but anything within the right of way would require um, a permit uh, that would go through the right of way um, division um, with the Department of Public Service. So regardless of board approval, that's not a guaranteed approval. If it's in the right of way, it's gotta go through a separate um, approval process. So I don't know if they've started that yet or not. We've had uh, our preliminary site compliance meeting with the various departments. Uh, with traffic on there as well, and I, because I and I don't know if they handle. Uh, it seems like they're the first people that handle a little bit of right away information. So they've seen this plan, and maybe they they haven't commented on that, but maybe they didn't understand what that bench was, or just didn't notice it. Um, so I think that's cer some, certainly something we can review with them further, and we'll, we'll know, make sure. 
yeah. I've been through that process as well. When we did our Yankee Trader development, we had to put the, the dumpsters in the right, the dumpster enclosure in the right away. Uh, and we actually helped Mikey's Late Night Slice with their um, patio um, on 4th Street as well. Uh, but we would, would intend to make sure we do that process, but we have not yet. And I, I guess my question is, if for some reason that doesn't get approved, it kind of changes my, my view of what the screening and you know you remove that then it then the design changes immensely so i don't know how we handle that jackie well, uh, I yeah think... i think it would go ahead jackie i think it would just be as simple as if they if they had to there's a couple ways the, the board could handle it i mean if the board felt comfortable with staff reviewing and approving a modification it could be approved you could you could work that into the motion, but um, otherwise the standard process would be that they would likely get back in touch with Belkis and say, hey, we had to make a design change, and then they just have to come back before the board to get that okay. review that aspect reviewed. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I was going to say, uh, Jackie, as well. That we would be happy to come back if we have to modify this to have the board review it if that's what they want. Okay. So I suppose the. The sole question here on that issue then is whether it's going to be staff approved or or board approved. Assuming assuming they have a problem, Kim. So this may be some a somewhat related question. Um, so in terms of the the paving that's out and that's on your property versus the existing sidewalk, I'm because of the limit of work. I'm trying getting confused about where one stops and the other. Are you planning on replacing the entire sidewalk in addition with the paving on your property or is it gonna be the sidewalk will stay and you'll have a separate kind of paved area that you're responsible for? Uh, what we're currently showing is the sidewalk would stay in portions. I mean, you can see we've had to, we have to replace some of it just due to underground utilities routing to the site, um, but otherwise we would keep it yeah, I, I find that, very, I mean, that's going to look really awkward to have different pores and it seems to me that you, you'd want to have one nice new completed paved area that's all in unison thing. This is supposed to be a, a plaza amenity. And if you're chopping up the existing sidewalk and replacing part of it, but not the other, I think it's going to look very strange. So I don't know if there's anything we can do to ensure that it's all done as one one project. So Kim, I think you're talking you're talking about those the area between the two patches, the area to the uh, east of the one patch, and then the, the little section on the west there, right? Well, you've got you've got the the obviously you're doing uh, the the underground utilities, and so you're having to paste, replace that section of sidewalk. But then you've got existing sidewalk on each side, and then you go further. There's another replacement, so it's it's going to look very patchworky. And I I just yeah. see, I, I don't. I don't think it would be too difficult for us to accomplish that. I mean, we're doing so much ass. We're doing so much concrete there already. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine they may tear up some of those patches, and we end up may end up doing it anyway. Uh, right. So we'd be happy to 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 do that, Kim. If that if that makes sense, uh, I just we think... have to make sure we um, do it in the correct way, where there is the uh, the um, curb cut for uh, ADA access there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just like you. It, it'd be great if you could work that out with the city because it would make. I, I think you would want that as at your front door to have it kind of all nicely done, as opposed to, you know, done piecemeal. Kim, I'm with you. I'm looking at the Google Maps right now, and the the, the city came through and put uh, ADA ramps on all of the corners there, so the corner has been done, but the rest of the sidewalk is not up to up to date. Um, and I think you're I think you're going to have a really hard time with making that look one look good, but to be uh, compliant and user friendly if you're just if you're just trying to cut and patch. I agree with you, Kim. Okay. And, and to the earlier point, we'll have to make sure all of that is coordinated with the right of way permits. And if it changes right. at all, we'll come back. Yep. And and Brent, do you, do you have a cut sheet for that bench or is it or am I missing something? I didn't see that in the package. Have we selected a product for that yet? No, we haven't. So I assume that we're not approving the bench. That would either be staff approval or it would have to come back to us. I don't know. 
we'd have, we'd of course uh, prefer staff approval on something like that if you had the direction of of type. I mean, we would we would intend to do something contemporary to match the building. Uh, we just haven't gotten there yet. And it is wood, right? Um, is it? It's uh, wood the, bench? Fence, the fence is wood. The no, I don't think the bench would be wood. It would. I, I mean, like Brent said, we haven't gotten that far yet, but yeah. the pictures we've been kind of looking at for references have not been wood. I don't think. They've been metal, is that right, Kevin? I'd say either metal or concrete. So like a painted yeah. metal or concrete was kind of what we were thinking, Kim? Uh, again, it could be anything, right? It could be wood, yeah. it could be concrete. <laughs> so we just need we need to know what it's going to be, I think. It's part of the materials, right? So, um, And, and the reason I, I bring that up is because you've got the wood fence. And so I, I was thinking, well, is that is there a link? Are you going to do this? You know, I think Landscape Forums has these really nice curved wood uh, wood benches, and it could be something like that. But you're saying no, it's not wood, so that's fine. Um, I, you know, we had this long discussion about that screen fence at the last meeting, and you know, I was advocating for something that really, um, you know, enclosed this kind of plaza area. Um, I don't think the three foot fence screens anything. Uh, if you're a five to six foot person, you're looking right over it. You're seeing everything in the parking lot. I don't think it does anything for you. Um, I think that fence needs to be, you know, at, 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 at twice the height at least, or at around twice the height, so, kind of so that it blocks a person's eye level. Again, if, depending if somebody's between, you know, five and six feet, you know, that if a range. Which obviously, they're shorter people, but. Um, and I was also thinking that does it tie into the architecture better? Um, in terms of if you got mullions or windows at the entrance, and if you brought that the line of the top of the fence off of the mullions, so that it kind of one of those mullions, so that it feels like it was kind of an extension of of that. But I just, I just, my my gut reaction is I think three feet's obviously minimal and maybe works in some situations. But here you have the front the front door to your office building. You've got parking right there that you're screening. And I don't think a three foot fence does anything for it. So I would uh, I would uh, suggest that we sh you should look at a taller fence. Kim, what if we did something that that changes in height from the the, the west to the east, maybe tall, taller on the west and less on the east? I'm just I'm just worried it'll abruptly end. You know what I mean? It'll just be kind of a cut off, uh, and I, I'm just worried about that a little bit. I don't know. I, I I just think it could be just a very simple, you know, it's a simple plane. And if you keep it consistent height, it could be really, it could be really nice. Um, I just don't think that what it's, what's there now is, is it's meeting a requirement as opposed to um, contributing to the, the entry experience, the street experience. I think what I can say is, you know, if that's, if that's a condition of approval, we'd, we'd be okay with that. Um, I don't, you know, I think um, we could, we could, we'd be okay with that. And, and you know, I'm fine with the, not having the, the screen fence on the, the alley. I think that's kind of like a somewhat of a waste um, to put it back there. So I, I would advocate for a taller Kim, fence here. Kim, as the, as the landscape yeah. architect of the group, I'm surprised you're not asking for, you know, when, when um, Brent talks about a fence looking abrupt, I could see landscaping there instead of a fence that would make that definitely not be abrupt, but you could have some that would eventually be three feet or higher and provide a better screen and some greenery. Um, I, I I personally think a, a, a wood fence in that location just there will look a little odd, but. Again, fences are part of the landscape. So I, I see that as part of the palette. And, you know, this is a very kind of architectural kind of statement, you know, an entry, and I don't mind having an architectural element that provides that screening. Um, you know, landscape uh, takes a lot of care and maintenance to really make it look really good. And if you don't, it could look really bad. So I, I'd rather fault for something that you could, if you did a really nice wood fence, I think that would be an asset that would, Kim, would have long Kim, lasting. To your, to your point there, Kim, this is TJ. I, um, I, I would, like to specify the the type and finish of the wood fence it says it is shown in the arch details in the architecturals but um the the picture that you show just looks kind of like a pressure treated horizontal fence um I'd, I'd like it to be a you know a clear cedar with a clear finish or something like that to 
of of kind of a higher quality to make it match the the, the new building that's going to be there and the higher end landscape that's going in front of it as opposed to just a something that's going to not age well that, that was where i was going next tj and that's why i was linking it to the bench that it, what what was the material on the bench and maybe that would be then you know try to think about link linking that to this screen fence so right yeah, I mean, typically, TJ, to your point, I mean, cedar or redwood or something like that is, is more appropriate for, for, for that. Even even pressure tree looks, it just starts to look really crappy. You're right. <laughs> and we it don't starts, want it to in our front door. It starts door. out looking kind of crappy and only goes gets worse from there. Yeah. <laughs> and then as you replace parts and pieces, you have you have different colors, et cetera. It looks really weird. Any further discussion? Um, there was there was concern last week um, about the three story wall on the conceptual design for Franklinton that had no windows and is on the property line and and Judy specifically and Kim specifically had comments about not liking that and not thinking that that was appropriate. This building has the exact same three story wall on the property line with no windows and is all black. Um, do we feel that the it looks like it is a, a, a higher end split face block that is there, but that is a large. Tableau of concrete. Or uh, how do you guys feel well, about that? Wasn't the assumption that there was going to be another unit built next to it anyway, so that you know, put it, trying to do anything there wouldn't be seen in I'm, the future, but we don't know I, that, right? <laughs> I am totally, I, I am totally fine with this as is, because I also am totally fine with the, I had to recuse myself, but I am totally fine with the conceptual design for chapel with the same, because you can't, you don't know what is going to be built on the property and right up to the property line next to you. Um, you have to obviously keep keep fire codes and, and other things, but you have every right to build on your property line to the property line. Um, I am I am fine with this. I'd like to see in the short term, in the meantime, there be some artwork or color put on that side that may get lost to, to the sands of time at some point. Um, if as architects have a tendency to want to be more minimal, if they don't agree with that and they make a case that we like a, a big black wall and are not interested in putting more color on it, you know, I can be probably swayed either way. It's their building, not mine, but um, it's, I just want to make sure that you guys are taking the same approach with both projects that have the exact same wall. Um, and so I, I just wanted to raise the point. I'm, I personally am fine with this wall and I'm fine with it being on the property line and not having no windows and being um, the, the higher end block on the, on the face. So, um, but just, just wanted to, wanted to bring that up. But if, but if nothing's built on that lot, then we're forever living. With forever living with a huge blank wall. Right. Which, what, what you know, Yep. What I can speak to, um, obviously, and it, you, you hit the code issues. I don't think we can legally put windows no. in it. No, right? I, I'm, but I'm uh, we we are exploring ideas around some some artwork on the on the property. Uh, we're not ready to commit to it, and we would come back as a as a um, revision down the road or another application. But we've been we've been thinking about that because we agree. Well, that's the you. You don't need to come back to us for any kind of art. You only need to come back to us for for graphics. Um, gotcha. So we could, if that's something that you are serious about, we could approve it with the understanding that you will be putting art on that wall. I'd um, prefer to to get it approved without that understanding because we haven't gotten into the financials of that situation yet. Yeah that that's a possible place without get, that we would approve that as a possibility without well we would be approving a three it. we would be approving a two story by 80 foot blank wall concrete wall yeah for it's a, a warehouse for forever you know it's i think it's i think it fits 
East Franklinton. It's a kind of funky warehouse. And so I, I'm okay, and especially knowing that it's a, uh, you have the material up there, right? The, the block that you're using. Yes. Could you describe that a little bit? Kevin, do you mind giving that a little bit better description? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, what we've got there, I don't think it's split face. I think it's, yeah, we've got it called out as ground face. Um, so it's, um, it's a little bit hard to describe, I guess. I mean, it'll, it's, show, so, it'll show the aggregate, but be flat. Yeah, exactly. And it won't be, uh, I don't know, yeah, it's kind of, if you think about regular concrete block, the ground face is typically, uh, like, Texture wise, it's slightly less porous, I guess you could say, because it's been ground instead of just formed. Um, so up close, it has just a little bit nicer texture, I guess you could say. And um, you were and you were looking for a stained or a charcoal color, not not your standard. Yeah, that's correct. We we, we considered we considered split face, but we were a little bit concerned about um, you know the, the uneven kind of staining that comes long term with with split face. I'm I'm fine with this over split face any day. I think I think this will be good. So Bart and TJ, let me ask you. So TJ, you you opened up the question. So so that's a a very flat facade. Would any kind of like relief in the in the masonry material, you know, kind of coming out and creating some kind of a would that help it, or would that just not help it? He you, you mean something like 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 pilaster courses like, or pilasters uh, or something, something to break up that mass right right just so there's some shadow lines and stuff on it um i vote no <laughs> i think it's, we're like, not it's voting a warehouse <laughs> it's Bart, a box where, and it's Bart, got this where were you last week on the uh on the on the property that was supposed to be a warehouse 50 yards from that <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one one case at a time, TJ. Uh, I know. <laughs> I had to bite my tongue and recuse myself last week. <laughs> the landscape architect in me could say, "Hey, we could plant vines and grow them up along," but I would well, vote. The architect that too. In me says that's a terrible <laughs> idea from a masonry standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I've had my historic preservation course. <laughs> I just think simpler is better here. <laughs> yep. I mean, relief and things like that cause flashing complications, which could cause us leaks, et cetera. So from our standpoint, we like the look. We think it's a, a better, a better, a easier construction ultimately. And, and that's our point of view, obviously. Okay. Anyone else? If not, um, Kim, you brought up the issue, so uh you you you're the lucky guy who gets to try to do a motion here i think we got three elements uh which number one is the fence number two is the bench and uh and number three is the uh uh is hey, a place hey, in, is, is whether we're going to subject them to uh, uh coming back to the board if the uh if if the placement in the right away is not approved or if they if we can leave that up leave that change up to staff approval. Number four, if I may throw this in there, would be to uh, bring up to standard and, and the, the entire sidewalk on the, on the parcel. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Uh, and, I, and Bill, we don't need to say anything about the fence along the alley because that's already not in it, right? We're approving it with that, ex that exemption. This, I think okay. it's right, approved staff with staff um, with staff um, recommendations, right? For those types of things. We're breaking up there, Brent. I'm sorry, that that's covered in the staff recommendations. So usually we see that as a motion okay. approved with staff recommendations and these other things. All right. Well well, Kim, you want to give it a go? Well, before I do that, I just wanted I, I the, the the height of the fence, I was saying that it needed to be somewhere between five and six, but and it would be best if it related to uh you know, something on the architecture. Does anybody have any um, ideas about how to define that? I think that uh, the entire landscape piece, I mean, the elements are right. 
but it's far too schematic right now. And they, they haven't even gotten into some of those pieces. So I think we just put a circle around that whole landscape right away piece. And I think it'd be appropriate for them to come back, you know, that we, we approve it contingent on their coming back for the approval of the right away uh, landscape piece. Or the front, the front entry right of way piece. Yeah, yeah. I like, I, I like, like that. All the front. elements I'm fine with. It just, I, I want to see what it looks like when you, you know, with the with this other thinking. So, I'm uncomfortable just saying yes to a, a dimension yeah. or something. Yeah, right. I agree. It would, it would be helps for your motion. We've been referring to that with staff as a pocket park. Exactly. So, so could, can we approve subject to uh, coming back to us for the pocket park? design is that i think we could uh, i mean in terms of semantics yeah, yeah. i'm comfortable with that so i make that motion <laughs> i second okay, it okay so it's been moved and seconded that the applications approved uh uh subject of with the condition that the applicant return to the board for approval of the uh, for approval of the pocket park. Is that uh, is that a reasonably accurate description of what you just moved? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, then uh, Jackie, if you will call the roll, please. Yeah. Oh, can I? Uh, could you clarify who seconded the motion? Overly. Cool. And I'll say that that could be helpful just when you're doing the motion first and second. The, the first is usually pretty easy, but if you can say your name when you do the second, it's just really hard to pick up with that one uh, one word whose it is. So, um, I just so, went through this. Uh, I I agree completely. <laughs> um, Mr. Fergus. Approved. Dr. Box. Approved. Mr. Szymanski. Approved. Approved. Mr. Manthris? Approved. Mr. Overly? Approved. Mr. Way? Approved. Mr. Egner? Approved. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. We appreciate Thank the you. dialogue and your help as always. Thank you. All right. Let's find my, find my agenda again. There we go. Okay. So we have new applications. First new application is EF 21040002. Address is 480 West Town Street. Uh, Blake Compton, agent to owner, and John Lyle, agent uh, with our call, I gather, is the applicant. And the owner is Hatch 480 Town LLC. And we are looking at a change of use and exterior alterations for a new restaurant. Uh, Jackie, staff report, please. Yeah, so 480 West Town is an existing one story commercial building at the corner of West Town and McDowell in the Arts and Innovation Subdistrict. The applicant is seeking approval for a change of use from civic, non assembly, and other assembly um, that's the current use to eating and drinking. They're also proposing exterior facade alterations on the north and west elevations, including new windows and window openings, repairing the existing brick, adding new metal siding, and adding a new metal canopy at the corner entrance. The south and east elevations will remain as they are today. Um, the proposal is consistent with the recommendations of the East Franklinton Creative Community District Plan. The plan permits eating and drinking uses at this location and recommends that contributing buildings be preserved that street level facades be as transparent and, and that street level facades be as transparent as possible. Um, both the co code and the plan state that wall mounted lights should be fully shielded and directed downward to minimize glare um, above the horizontal plane. Staff is supportive of the proposed parking reduction as the applicant is providing more parking than would be required by the draft East Franklinton special parking area. Staff recommends the applicant discuss with the board if the wall sconces will shine above the horizontal plane and alterations be made to prevent light impacts if needed. Staff supports the proposal and recommends approval 
Um, if it is approved, as shown, the board will be granting the following modification to the East Franklinton District Development Standards, a parking reduction of 14 spaces, and to allow exterior lighting that's directed upward. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? If not, uh, will the representatives for the applicant identify themselves, please? You are muted. Uh, John Lytle, Archall. Hi, Blake Compton. Okay, gentlemen, you are the, you the only two? Yes. Okay, uh, and do you swear or affirm that the statements are about the testimony you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief. I do. I do. Floor is yours. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, just a little context. Uh, uh, the owner of this building wants to get it uh, more um, attractive to a restaurant user, um, hoping for a you know a lunch type of place or a breakfast lunch type of place, and our uh, in uh, active conversations with some locals in the neighborhood um, that have some shops and food trucks, some pop-up stuff, um, and uh, getting over this hurdle of the uh, the parking variance and the use, uh, while also getting a new roof on and doing some exterior upgrades will help it make it more attractive to uh, a potential tenant. And we fully expect that the potential tenant may come to the table with um, some additional uh, upgrades in the future, and we'll have a separate application at that time. Um, I think John could touch on the light conversation. Um, this is a little bit of a premium light fixture that we're looking on there, uh, I think on the next slide. And uh, we were able to confirm that there's an option to have the light shine more on the wall rather than straight upward. Uh, and that, uh, John, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's great. The, this, this light fixture has a, an option to switch the angle of the actual light itself so we can keep it, you know, per staff recommendations uh, below the, uh, you know, the coping at the, at the top. Um, and it'll be, it'll more face the wall and shine on the wall than than actually go you know up upward. <clears throat> okay. All right. Any questions for the applicant? Cam, I have a question. Um, the metal siding on yeah. the south elevation. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the metal siding. Is it a corrugated metal? It does is it a like a color finish? Yes. So you can actually we have the submittal in the it's in the, one of the I think the last pages of the, um, the presentation. But it's a DMI. It's actually a roofing panel. Um, that we've looked into using it um, on other projects. Um, and we have found that you can use it in a, you know, a vertical um, uh, condition. Um, this this project probably ideal for it because if, if you get above, let's say, you know, 20 feet or, or so with these panels, then you have oil canning you know, issues. But we're going to be able to keep it with the seam probably around the windows at around 10 feet or less, which you know will significantly reduce any any chances of oil canning. Um, and the color currently is, you know, we're showing like a light gray, but you know we're we, we're up for kind of options on that. I think. Um, is it, it's a, a standing seam batten, and what's the spacing of the batten? So you can we, we're gonna have it um, at different lengths. We can go anywhere from nine inches wide to um, I believe eighteen inches wide. So we're gonna so it's gonna know, vary. It's gonna, yeah, right. It'll vary across the, the elevation. 
that's cool. Which which profile are you planning on using, or are you going to combo between profiles? Uh, uh, I, well, we'll just use the, probably the standard profile that you saw back in the the submittal. Um, put your to vary your the panel little. size. Yeah, the submittal. If you if you scroll right where we're at, if you go down to the page thirteen. There's four profiles on the panels. Oh, right. Oh, so we'll be using the smooth. So it'll be the smooth in between. And then the panel widths are in 12 and 16. Does it come in uh, other, other than 12 and 16? Nine, nine inches, 12 and, and uh, 16, I believe. Yeah. So we'll have three different variations on the, the facade. We thought it was a good, I mean, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of corrugated going up around the city and we thought this, this would be a good alternative to, you know, keep it the metal paneling, but have something a little different. And are these, are these painted or are able to be, I mean, they're probably, they're DMI powder coated, I'm sure, but are they, um, are they able to be painted in the field? So when you get a, a tenant who wants to, change the color are they able to be adequately sprayed and, and look good to be changed color or? uh that i do not know i can find that out I, I mean we've never we've never looked into that we've always picked a you know a pre-finished color um when we go with it but you know we can find that out and see if that's a possibility is there is there a tenant that you're blake is there a tenant that you're speaking with that you would be able to or do they would they care uh, on the color of that uh yeah we we uh when we started this process we were in active conversations with the food truck that have uh slowed down a little bit um i have two lois out right now um uh in fact the first version of this rendering had the food trucks logo on it and uh thankfully we didn't send that to you guys <laughs> Cause that's not who it's going to be right now. Um, so no, we, we don't have, uh, uh, you know, we, we are up for that conversation. If we can get someone here soon in the next 30 days or so, you know, pending this approval. Um, but we're trying to go with something that will, you know, obviously, uh, be malleable to, uh, whatever brand comes into place, which that's, is another, that's, that's where I'm going with is I, I would prefer not to have somebody come in and want to paint it. Um, that, that won't happen. Okay. Question about the canopy. Um, yeah. Does it get guttered at all? Good question, Bart. Um, yeah. You know, we have it. Go ahead, John. Well, I, I, it's a good question. I thought we thought about that, and we'd like to keep it as clean as possible without showing a gutter out the top. But you know, if if uh, you know, if need be, we could always run down something run down the back, um, but we like to keep it clear if possible. That would that would leave it, you know, to water running off the front, which is not ideal. So, um, I think that's something we could, you know, look into. <laughs> Even if it was, uh, I agree with you. Keep it minimal, and maybe it doesn't even need to do stuff. But you could do some kind of a like a stop gutter detail along the the front faces of it so that you could then channel the water to the the two sides i i just think you know to have all that water sheeting off at the front entrance mm -hmm. uh, so it becomes sort of a water feature with uh <laughs> two spigots well, coming out on, when it's raining well, yeah, I mean, maybe you control it so you do get a water feature out of it, but I, I just think just from an operational standpoint, you don't want it sheeting off right on the front entrance. Right. Yeah, and it, and it is partially in the public right of way, so we'll have to go through the right of way permit process. And right. um, we still have some engineering to do on it. I think we're here for conceptual review on, on that from from that standpoint. 
Okay. Well, that said, I think it looks pretty good. Okay. Do you have some, do you have space on McDowell or on town to have a, you know, planter boxes or something where those could, where that those downs could then turn into a, mm. to a box of some sort, so you don't have to just flush it out to the. Uh, there, there is a little bit of space, and in fact, the parcel line on Town Street is, is partially into the sidewalk, so um, just by like maybe five feet. So definitely on the Town Street side. Um, I think I think McDowell could happen too. It's it's definitely a wide sidewalk at that at that portion of the of the street. It, it narrows right after our curb cut there. Um, I like that idea, and I think at one point we were showing a planner box. Um, did, yeah. That, yeah it was it was more uh the prior tenants request to hide the gas meter which i don't even think we can do anyway so 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 i have the same line of questioning tj likes to play landscape architect so I'll, i wanted him to do that <laughs> um, i've learned <laughs> you know that that whole the whole condition around the building is 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 not um is not typical in that area if you look to the um east and the west it's more of your traditional sidewalk with a um, planting strip and then a, a green setback up against the uh, the building um I, there's no landscape here proposed at all and that's an incredibly wide sidewalk um and right now it's very unkept i i, I have multiple questions kind of building on what tj said could you actually build in a a planter along the um, town street edge actually both edges maybe um, like what you would see in a, it going down the street, right? And and there's no street trees here e either, so it's it's a double whammy. So I, I personally would like to see some kind of uh, a plan for landscape. Um, it's got a soft. This is a very harsh corner, um, and it it really needs to be softened in some way. And I know yeah, that you're and, not and responsible I, I, for street trees, right? But it seems like it should have street trees here. <laughs> Yeah, and we do have uh, on the McDowell Street side. We have a very old tree in in our lawn there. I don't know if it's uh, yeah, it's actually notated, but you can see it on the on on Google View. Um, yep. You know, I, I I think one of the things that we, with 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 respect to where this application is, is uh, we it very very likely could have a patio experience there on Town Street um, at some point uh, with a tenant. Um, you know, right before COVID. Uh, last year, we were talking to a tenant that had a really great idea, um, and it just, you know, it, it just d died on the spot when COVID hit. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would hope that, um, you know, I, I take your feedback and apply it to this tenant, this new tenant, this pr prospect tenant's, you know, plan if they ever come back with a patio plan. Um, but, but, yeah, Blake, that was I, that was my next line of uh, inquiry because I, I wanted to start with the landscape piece, but. You know, it's crying out to have a patio all along that edge and be more permeable and have people and activity. And right now it's all focused on the one corner. Yeah. And it's 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 a very important corner, right, in, in East Franklinton that needs a lot of love and attention. And I don't see it in this yet. And I'd really like to see that whole street environment, street edge animated, um, you know, differently than it is now. Agreed. So, and one other question I had for you about parking, um, that parking, the existing parking lot is like 53 feet wide. You could almost put another row of parking, especially if you put it, if you made it diagonal or something Yeah. Um, and get more parking on the site. It seems like we're approving, uh, what, nine parking spaces. Um, it seems like and giving you a, a, a variance for the rest. So seems to me that, that you could accommodate more parking than you are, that you're just giving up a lot of asphalt to circulation. And, and then the question is, um, can, can you get alley access and use the alley as a, another way to kind of flow through the site? And right now you have a fence there, right? Yeah, existing fence, yeah. But you could actually access the alley. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think that in the future, when we have a tenant locked in place with, with some kind of uh, long-term lease, 
that will be uh, a, a part of the plan. Uh, like you said, there's more room for parking, angled parking. If we could uh, relocate the curb cut, if we could open up the access to the back alley and have some kind of through traffic to the alley. Um, I think all of those things right now are gonna add a lot of expense and, and process that um, would complicate uh, what we're trying to do. And so we're just proposing the existing conditions um, be acceptable. Right. Um, okay. And one other just clarification on page six. I mean, you show the existing fence to remain. I was just clarifying that that's the fence that's on the alley. It looks like it's right up on um, McDowell Street, but it's actually the all the way in the back, right? uh yeah uh no uh, yeah that's the alley fence even though you've got it on an elevation of mcdowell yeah you're just seeing it the all the way in the back right yeah, yeah. okay yeah. i i just just clarifying that yeah yeah okay is there is there any aversion to kim's idea of of adding you know six or eight angled parking spots there if that's if that's doable um, I, is there, is there a plan for there to be an expansion of seating out there at some point to take advantage of some of that extra space or yes, yes, I, I, I've seen that in one of the, one of the potential tenants renderings was, was a direction that way, having a, a new entrance to the building, having something back there, using some of that space, um, for patio experience, which as a, as a resident and former user of the building I, I know it would be a quiet uh portion that would be really nice for for people to enjoy a, you know food and a drink um again i think it's just we don't want to go through site compliance twice or needlessly and we're trying to to improve the building in a way that makes it serious for tenants to consider it um without over improving it uh, uh on, on a speculative manner Kim, devil's advocate uh, to your parking condition is that, um, you know, the, on the, the East Franklinton special parking area update that we got basically talks about any restaurant that's less than 1,500 square foot is would be required zero parking. Now, granted, this is more than that, but yes. um, it gives you an idea of if we're going to require zero parking for a restaurant without a pickup window, that's 1,500 square foot um you know, this this one is essentially a thousand less than 800 square feet more uh that has nine spots with a with a handicap um just playing devil's advocate uh, and i'm just saying that it's I, I was just making the point tj that it's there's a lot of space there dedicated to nine spaces that you, you don't need all of it and if blake if you, you said well we're going to expand the the building to the north and that we need that space for that in the future well that would be one thing to have a conversation about yeah. Um, but yeah, or reorient but, the building, you know, make it into a patio, you know, but yeah. you're not doing that. So it's hard to have that conversation. But Kim, I would, I, with you, I would, I would much prefer to have a, a patio take up some of that 16 foot curb space, uh, to the South than into the parking lot to the, to the North. Um, just from a, a, a street view and, and a interaction of a pedestrian interaction standpoint. One, you'd have to move again. You'd have to move the curb cut to do either of those things. So maybe the, removing the curb cut is something that you should have a conversation with the city about, so that it gives you that flexibility in the future. Um, Push that curb cut north. Yeah. I have a question for if this is approved, um, and then we've approved the change of use here, and it does come in. They don't really need to come back unless there's more exterior alteration. Right. Sorry, you're breaking up for me a little bit, Matt. Um, you're saying if it's approved today, they won't need to come back for patio or anything else unless they're making changes. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's my question. Right, that's correct. So, so if the board approved it as submitted, um, the applicant would only need to return if they decided to make a change to um, the site from what they're showing today. So that being said, my, I would have some concerns about the landscaping or lack of it on especially the south side there. And if this is our chance to take a whack at it, then I think we could do that. 
Yeah, that would be, uh, I'm still, you know, I can understand the other things are, you know, kind of in flux, but I don't, I don't want to walk away with just leaving the streetscape the way it is. I think that's a, you know, a really important part of this, and I think it should be addressed. I agree okay. with you, but Jackie, what is, what is the, yeah. what is our ability and our requirement if the right of way is at the side of the building to, to tell them to yeah. improve the, the city street? Yeah, I mean, it's, we it's have, a really we don't... good point. Um, it, it's, this is where it gets gray because the board can request things, you know, as a part of a, an approval. But if it's in the right of way, then technically um, that all has to be approved by um, the Department of Public Service. And, um, and if they say no, then it's not going to happen regardless of, of what the board's conditions are. Um, so it is definitely a gray area. I mean, the board often in, you know, not just this board, but lot, all of our commissions often will comment on things in the right of way. Um, but ultimately, any approval um, lies in the hands of the Department of Public Service because they control the right of way. Um, I guess, um, you know, I'll just throw out, this is not what you asked, TJ, but I will throw out just as a second follow-up to Matt's question that, um, you know, the board can always um, approve the, the use and the parking or have some sort of condition for the applicant to return to discuss um, elements of landscaping and, and right of way. So it could be a conditional approval, which of course you're all aware aware of and do that often. Um, but um, that could give the applicant time to maybe think about what they'd be willing to commit to and also give them time to have a conversation with the Department of Public Service to see what, you know, would even be allowed. I, and I'll just state my opinion. I, I guess this is, in, in my view, this is an existing building. We are already had approved one change for it. Um, right away improvements could draw them into a drawer E plan. Um, I think the applicant's trying to make the building better. I, I'm not in favor of requiring right away improvements for this change. My mind would be different if it was a new build knocking down, they chose to place the building where they did. Um, I, I I think that as proposed, I would be supportive of the plan. Uh, Ryan, I'm with you. And I think if somebody came back and wanted to put uh, patio space into the right of way, um, I think that, you know, can we put a condition on it that if patio space is, is requested through the city for a patio permit, that we, we have the condition that they need to bring in yeah. landscaping or, or green uh, elements to to that patio space if they're going to take six feet of that sidewalk up that it can't just be a handrail with with chairs it needs there needs to be some some softening of that corner they, uh, they would have to come back to the board if they want if they were requesting to put a patio okay. in so they'd have they'd have to come back and then that would could definitely be a condition that the board could set at that time because, ryan I, I'm, I probably... I'm, I'm with you exactly I, they're they're trying to they're trying to update the building to get a tenant in there. And I, I, I have a hard time saying that we would start requiring them to do work in the city's property to, to beautify the corner that is not theirs. That, that's a slippery slope to them spending twice as much money on their project. And, uh, and I'll just add, if I'm, I can, um, uh, you know, we're actively looking this year uh, for a tenant and, uh, you know, in, 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 when it started with the, the previous food truck, there was patio plans and we knew we were going to come back to the table. I don't want to commit that any tenant we talk to is going to put a patio day one, but I would commit that any tenant we talk to is going to have a, a, a sign or a graphic. And so we'll be back in front of you and I'm taking this information and I'll make sure that we have some kind of landscaping consideration when we're presenting a graphic and hopefully a patio, but again, I don't want to commit to that because I don't know who we're talking to. Um, or I know who we're talking to right now. I don't know who we're going to end up with. Yeah, Jackie knows this is one of my pet peeves going way back to the beginning of the board that I've been advocating for a, a East Franklinton kind of streetscape plan that the city would, would help implement. And there have been fits and starts to that. Um, there was, some discussion about doing that with the utility improvements, but I don't believe that happened. 
And it's not just this project. There's other projects where there's these just, you know, there's no attention being put to the streetscape in areas where it needs it. And I think it's a real shame when we're trying to, you know, rejuvenate East Franklinton and not having the support of the city in the public right away to do that in, 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 in um, projects like this. So I was just I was just saying maybe there's a discussion. Maybe somebody would be interested in helping out <laughs> at the city. Uh, Go ahead, Matt. Uh, proposed compromise would, would Blake and the applicant to have maybe a conceptual approval. Um, and then when you do identify a tenant, you, you would have the assurance that, you know, what's here is okay, but we would maybe want to look at landscaping. Something like that work. Um, I think it would be better if we could get this approved as, as proposed knowing that we're coming back no matter what because it's not going to be called deli and, um, <laughs> it's very catchy to have right because yeah. uh, I, I think blake your intention is to do this work before you have a tenant correct we've yeah. we've got all the uh you know our our call is going to do the permit drawings here if, if we get approved today and we've got the budget uh at, to the bank and the bank's ready to close on the loan with approval today I, I think what, what if we uh, what if we took the canopy piece out of it? Uh, I, I'm just I keep looking at it and you know it's you're projecting into the right of way with it. It's got to be ten feet up. I mean, it just seems like an element that needs a little more study. I love the uh, skin on the side. Um, and I, I would, and I have no issue with the lighting. It's just I think that canopy needs a, another look. And Bart, I would think they could do it as returning for with canopy details. Okay. Just that yeah. returning for that where there's more that they're approved for everything that they have their ability to go for. But as art, as architect, arc all, I guess now not architectural alliance, um, that. Um, that they're going to have to provide more detail anyway. We, right. we typically require a section or something of that. So I, I think right. returning with more detail on that is appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're going to get comments from public service as well with right away and, you know, what, how much that overhangs, what they hang. Right. We'll have to show details for that when we go in for, <laughs> for them. I guess I guess to the point of um, you know this board is the canopy uh, a, a metal canopy uh, of interest to you because that was one of the like concerns we had coming to the table um, was was bringing a metal canopy rather than like a fabric canopy that you traditionally see. I, I don't have it. I I like the metal canopy because it it hopefully do, ties into the metal skin. I yeah. do too. I'm in favor of it. Yep. Favor. But I'm, but I'm also in favor of trying to figure out how that works with planters and a downspout and with the right of way and how that how that plays on the signage. You know, you you may want to you may want to do a a, a, a a fascia mounted sign on on something that's a little more flat. If depending on who your who your tenant is and when you come back for signage, that that may look a little different than it does now. But yeah, the metal is is. Great. I think there. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement that there is some things that still need to be worked out. But I, I, I think I'd, I'd provide a motion to approve um, the design as submitted, with the exception of the canopy to be brought back later with signage and possibly um, um, any any seating or anything else that would be uh, a, a possible future change with tenant. Maybe that lighting for staff approval. That light is the lighting. As as long as the lighting stays below the below the line of the building and and doesn't doesn't shoot up, I think that would be the case. So TJ, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. Just your your condition. Um, you had a few things in there. Um, so you said. Um, can you can you say that again? Because I'm thinking a couple of those things may prevent them from moving forward as I think you want them to. So, um, I would approve the 
the design yeah. has submitted with the parking variance, with the only so, exception yeah. being the canopy, which okay, could so, be re resubmitted at a later date. Okay, so um, do you want it uh, approved with the condition for them to return with the canopy, or do you want it approved um, without the canopy? And the difference with that being would be that um, if it's approved with the condition for them to return with the canopy, um, they cannot uh, get building permits until they come back and get board approval for the canopy, which is what I think you want. I just want to clarify. Um, I'll defer to Blake. Would you, you would probably prefer to have a building permit in hand and then not worry about the canopy until later, correct? Correct. And, and, and to, to your, to your original caveats, if the, you know, more thought needs to be around the canopy, the landscaping, and as that relates to graphics of the potential tenant. So yeah, essentially put the canopy in with the, with the tenant and with the signage and with the patio and, and yeah. just propose that later as an additional to the building. Yeah. So the, so, so the motion I gather then is for approval, uh, without, without the canopy feature simply stated. Yes, we have a second. A second overly. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to approve as submitted subject to the uh, uh, with without without approval of the canopy. Uh, Jackie, you call the roll, please. Mr. Fergus. Approve. Dr. Box. Approve. Mr. Szymanski. Approve. Mr. Manfred. Approve. Mr. Overly. Approve. Mr. Way. Approve. Mr. Egner. Approve. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. time. Okay. Our next application is EF 21040003. Address is 468 West Town Street. The applicant is Schwab Architecture Studio LLC, and the owner is the Franklinton Development Association. And we're uh, reviewing a change of use and exterior alterations for new office. Jackie, staff report, please. 468 West Town is a two story single family home within the Arts and Innovation Subdistrict. The applicant is proposing to convert the home into an office with new gray fiber cement panel cladding, new windows and doors, new metal roof, porch railing, and an overhead canopy, and, an, and a new ADA access lift in the rear. The existing chain link fence in the backyard will be removed and a wood fence will, will replace it, or the wood fence will be repaired. Um, the proposal is consistent with the recommendations of the East Franklinton Creative Community District Plan. The plan permits office use at this location. Um, additionally, the plan recommends contemporary materials and that contributing buildings be preserved. Staff requests that the final site plan show the repaired fence. <laughs> Staff supports the parking reduction due to maneuverability and parking space size constraints. In addition, the draft East Franklinton parking area would require zero spaces, which is what the applicant is proposing. As such, staff supports the proposal and recommends approval. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Any questions for staff? If not, will the applicants identify themselves, please? And I'm Steve Schwab with Schwab Architecture Studio. And Eric Skidmore with Franklin Development Association. Okay. Gentlemen, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes. Okay. The floor is yours. Thanks, Warren. I appreciate you getting the name right too. That that's that doesn't happen very often on the first try. Uh, so pure uh, water. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, you know, um, appreciate you guys taking the time today. So what we have here is a is a is a diamond in the rough, if you will. Um, if you're familiar with the building, obviously you know that um, you know this is this corner uh structure was was probably destined for a bulldozer but um 
you know, Eric and I have been working on this design for a little over a year now, um, just trying to make sure that, um, you know, we, we give it the justice it deserves. Um, at one time, we um, it probably thrived a little bit more, obviously, than what you see now. But um, the uh, one of the things that we enjoyed about the, the thoughts of keeping this uh, building, um, it it kind of set some parameters for us that um, led us to where we are today as far as the proposed use. Um, you know, the building has good bones. Um, it just needed a, a massive facelift. Um, and given the the flavor of the of the neighborhood, um, we thought a small office would really really bode well and uh, give give this intersection the boost that it really needed. Uh, really needs, um, you know, a boutique office would be would be a, a perfect fit for not only, you know, some of the even previous applicants that we've heard today, but essentially what's what all is going up in this um, this corridor. Um, so, you know, with that, we have a pretty good, um, pretty thorough um, scope of work ahead of us. You know, with uh, with a top down renovation and. Um, you know, we're we're seeking full approval today based on on you know what we had proposed. Um, so yeah, with that, I'd like to turn it back over to you guys if you have any questions about about what we have, what our thoughts are on the design. Yeah, thank okay, you. thank you. Um, any questions for the applicant? Is this, do you have an office tenant? Is this going to be uh, an architecture studio or is this uh, spec? We do not have a tenant, it's spec. I think it looks great. It's great use of that house. Um, it's a kind of a very nice modern redesign of this existing property. Thank you. The the concrete panel system that you're proposing uh, is it a, is it a system? Does it have a like a space? Is it a, like a rain screen system? Can you describe it a little bit? Yeah. So the, uh, the James Hardy they have a, they kind of have a proprietary not necessarily a proprietary but they have kind of a, a, a recommended way to to install their system and have and maintain the warranty on it. Um, Panel system will have a drainage 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 plane behind it with you know that's set off. Um, this particular case, um, you know, we will see at the top of the elevation page. Um, we were proposing originally um, to do a batten kind of seam system because panels only come in I think four by eight sheets. Um, it was it was critical for the design to kind of um, be. Uh, you break up the paneling to kind of fit with the rhythm of the windows um, and both horizontally and vertically. So you try to, you can kind of shape these panels any size you'd like to, as long as, as, long as they're in the, within the, the I guess the, the max panel size. Um, the seam, the vertical seaming is just a, another fiber cement um, trim piece that will kind of uh, border or, or frame in the, the panels on a ver in a vertical capacity. Um, so really, it's a it's kind of a fail safe sy system uh, to use. Um, so is, it a, a, uh, is it a pre finished panel or is it a panel that you would paint? You can. Um, so our particular case, we have um, we have the um, they come out with a brand new line. I guess um, James Hardy did with some with integral color, uh, which is what we had chosen here. Um, the, the so yeah there there you go um, so scrolling down on the, on those material specs you'll see um, you can paint the material they come in primed um, if you if you don't have like their standard color uh, we chose a standard color that they that they make um, just to keep things a little more maintenance free for for the long run um, but is it the gray that I see at the top. Yeah, so you'll see the so that's the um, that's the plank that's the part in the rear of the building. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see the Hardy panel. 
Um, there, so yeah, there's a hardy. So you get a smooth panel. Um, and the coloring, I think, is the next. So the dream collection has a, a, a varying palette of grays that we had chosen. The more the, I think it's the night gray, if I remember correctly, um, or whatever they call night gray. Okay. And then the accent panel, that's. Yeah, so the accent panel that you'll see kind of in line with the, the window um, spacing is more of a. Uh, in this case, it'll be more horizontal plank. It has, in this case, a, I thought maybe a wood texture would be nice to kind of bring bring a little more um, uh, variation to the elevation design. And then, um, you know, that's going to be a uh, a lighter gray material. That's also also has an integral color, I believe. So it's gray and gray. It's not gray and gray, not yeah. gray and beige. No, that, that yeah, it'll, be, yeah, it'll be a family of you know. A family of gray color. Gates of gray, as they say. It wouldn't have it any other way as an architect. So, okay. uh, no, I, I think it looks good. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I'm going to jump in. Um, because, you know, I, I love talking about architecture. Um, I I don't have any problems with the material. I, what I have a problem with is the proportions of the material in relationship to a small single family designed house. I think those panels are way out of scale. Um, I was looking at in the catalog, the, the the image of the blue building still has some bigger panels, but they still seem to be more proportionate to the scale of the house. I, I don't know how you said those are four by eight sheets of the cement material. They, or? they come in four by eight sheets. I'm not, they're not, they aren't. Um... We're not designing them to be four by eight. I think they are um, maybe thirty inches at the most, three feet. Okay. Um, they just look again. It just it changes the whole scale of a small house. And I I, I actually love this the uh, the lap uh, component of it. <laughs> if you had done that over the whole thing, I'd say, wow, that's great. I, I just I and I don't like the change in direction in the front facade versus the the rest of it. I just think they're out of scale for a small building like that. Like if you could scale down the the breaks between them, or I don't know, it just it does it doesn't seem right to me. What if the uh, seems... what if the width of it is the width of the window, which I assume yeah. is like two feet four inches or something, so you get more vertical panels out of it. That's that would make more sense to me to start to scale it down to the elements of the house, right? That's what mm -hmm. we're getting at. It just those those proportions just don't relate to the the scale of the windows or the doors or the, I don't no. know. It, it just doesn't seem, it just visually doesn't, so, <laughs> you know, seem right. So I, I'll go ahead and play architect here a little bit. The, the picture there though, is that was on that Hardy is more of a board and batten look yeah. and trying to do that out of these panels with the hidden fastener system and the seams. I think that's going to look at the, the, I mean, if, Kim, I'm not saying I disagree with your comment because I do see exactly what you're talking about. These panels are meant to be more, are meant to be bigger. If we're saying we would like to go to that smaller, I would, you'd go to a more board and batten style without the, the fastener system and the joints as um, was described. Um, because if you use this material in the current fast, it's going to look very odd with all the seams that are going on that would well uh, well also it's a uh it's a four by eight sheet that you're starting with right that they yeah they would start with um so we have this this horizontal band across the uh, top across the entire perimeter breaking up that um uh, you know so part of the part of the issue that we had is we wanted we didn't want really want to make this look like a like a resonance you know but we needed to so increasing that scale it it brings a little more commercial feel to the building um, and it plays into some more some of the more monolithic buildings that are that are in the immediate vicinity like Brewdog and you know and what will now be you know the Triads building and um, you know Blake's building right across the street so. You know the goal here is the goal here is to kind of find that delicate balance of 
you know, how do we get this, um, you know, this thing scaled in a way that that makes um, that makes this thing feel like it's actually a commercial structure. Um, can I ask one question? I think it, it kind of is it follow up to, to Kim's, but if you're looking at the elevations and you, you're, you're at the west side and the south side next to each other there uh, on the bottom, the south side between the windows looks like it has horizontal lines and actually gives it a, a different feel altogether than the side. Yeah, so the so the, the way that the panel sizes work, we didn't have we didn't have the that was five and a half feet or yeah, it was it was over four feet. So I had to actually do a brake metal kind of seam. Um, luckily, the goal the, the goal for that front is to to have that that kind of horizontal seam. Um, yeah, more and or I, less. And um, I and I actually think to to Kim's point. Kim, what is your thought with that with that south front? I actually think that that south front works better to your comment than than does the the large side on the west. Yeah, it's it's hard to say, TJ. I I just it's the scale of those panels. I mean, I mean, no matter what you do, this is a single family East Franklinton house, and it it it's it be and the roof being a hip roof, you know, just reinforces that. No matter what you do to it, you're not going to change it from looking like a house. And it's almost and, and trying to not make it look like a house, make it look like an office building. I don't think it's you're achieving that. Maybe if you take the roof off and make a flat roof, it would look more like an office building. But I, I think you're trying too hard to make it not look like a house. And I think the scale of this is a building of the windows of the other details. It, it the siding needs to be of the same scale. And, and again, I love the the lap the lap. Part yeah. of it. What, and I'll throw did this you out. consider did you consider just doing board and batten like uh, we, we actually did a very contemporary house here in Franklinton that was board and batten and it has accents it's basically gray on gray but you get like pops of uh, color and you get kind of breaks kind of like what you're doing in terms of composition but you get a finer you get a finer tooth out of the board and batten and then when you get the the wide break where the windows are where you want the accent it, it it's a panel so it's board and batten and panel um you know it, it, the other thing i think it, you, it was brought up the windows themselves that I think you could do something, it doesn't have to be double hung, but you could do, those look like big, are they casement windows? Uh, they're going to, they're probably going to be just pic picture windows. They're not going to, I would assume they're not operable. In, in they're our not case. operable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you could look at other options that are residential-ish. It's not like, I mean, this will always have the scale of the residential building, but you could do like, cottage style which are not true double hung windows but they would give you a break and they'd give you some opportunity to have some operable windows in this which i think would be desirable um Bart, I'm the, I'm all for making it contemporary but it it, it does I think I think Kim's point is really good a really good one about the I size I, of that panel. I think is what pointed out is that west elevation you you have this horizontal band that breaks the material but then the material above and below is the same and that that to me you know is an opportunity to change materials potentially maybe and I don't know that this is a solution but maybe that's the horizontal plank on the bottom and then the top reads more contemporary maybe it's board and batten um but i feel like there's just not an, enough break in the type of material on the building so I, i'll speak I, I i was actively seeking to get more of a commercial look and and trying to avoid so that this didn't just look like a residential um home that had an office inside of it um the, the that was actively sought on on my part um i um and so that 
is why we went away from kind of the lap. Um, hey, uh, and and this is know, this has call. kind of if you see there's the, the alternate the the primary is is effectively um, I think would be reasonably described as a as, as a board and batten for most of the alternate that um, is the, is the one that is not I don't I don't know which page it is from where we're seeing but you can see that there's the two proposals effectively what you're seeing here would be properly described as a board and batten which, which is the board and batten? this that Steve would you this this is the the primary here. There's the two alternates. I can't see the page. Yeah. So the design, the, it's a, it's a it's an oversized board and batten style, I guess. Um, so you're to find to to think the scale or the you know <clears throat> maybe a semantics at this point where but essentially it's it's the same construction as a board and batten would be uh, just a wire panel. Um, but it doesn't have the projection of a board and batten, so you wouldn't have the shadow line and. Uh, those the battens are are going to sit proud of the panel system. So you're going to have you will have that three and a half foot panel or that shadow line on uh, um, both the top and bottom floors in alignment. Like um, what we were but proposing I still, originally. I still think it. I think Kim's point is a good one. I I think it, this will read like a contemporary. It's not going to look like an office building. It's not an office building. It's a repurposed. The scale of it is this kind of residential scale, but it can it can be very contemporary, and I think that's what you're going for. Um, but I I also think Kim's point is right. It's like the panels. They feel even though there would be patents, they would be too far in between, and and. Uh, it would be a very um, it would be a very stark finish. Can, can um, you go back to that the the picture that showed the fastening system because I'm just not seeing the bat and I'm seeing that as a channel lock. It it is a channel. It is a it is a opposite right. of a batten. It is a okay. it's a negative space between the fry riglet system is uh, that that's actually going to be a, a negative space next to the panel. Yes. No, that's the that's the alternate. Oh, that 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 up there, alternate yeah. material, would be the fry regular. And and I'll be frank, we can't afford that. Yeah, well, I was gonna. I was. My <laughs> next comment was, if you add a if you add a batten in the middle of these four by eight sheets and get rid of the fry riglet, you're probably going to save quite a bit of money. Yeah. It, there you it, go. We yeah. were working hard to try to accomplish some something with that that seam, that negative space seam, and and have not found any alternatives. And and we've ex I think we've exhausted our options. So it, it will be the the alternative is probably not something we need to consider any further. So it is, it is going to be a board. I mean, Kim, would you would you be more uh, towards it if it if they had added you know a, a half measure of, of battens to to go from the four foot wide planks to a two foot wide plank and and add a batten in the middle of of each one of those to more equally space the the window and well again if you look at the catalog of the br the blue. The blue siding, the page of the blue siding. I think that looks very nice. But what's interesting about that is they put the vertical panels on the second story, and the first story is horizontal uh, yes. lap. I, I, and that's a really nice, interesting play text for that would be appropriate for a residential scale um, building. I don't know. The simplicity is also fighting it too. Right? The, I mean, I don't know how wide those are, but to me, that looks much, much more in scale with that building. And then the first floor, you can see they're horizontal. So you get that textural change too. Oh, and then they got the, the, the other stuff, <laughs> the shingles up above. They got everything. Everything, everything is on there. Yeah. That's the. <laughs> but <laughs> too many things on that. Too many things. Maybe. This, <laughs> this is a conversation between, between multiple architects here, but I think from from a non-architect point of view i i understand what 
the applicant is trying to do with not make it a, a board and batten residential house it, you know putting putting making it look like the james hardy panel brochure makes it look like a home not an office um and i think it it, it would make it much harder for him to try to find a, a tenant in, in for an office space um doing that but you're i think kim you also touched on a little point that was to change the hip roof and you know the the standing seam roof that's on that is not necessarily a, a cheap solution. But if you if you if you took off that old roof and you put a flat roof on it, then all of a sudden the building as designed works a lot better. Um, it becomes an office building and not a house. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, your that that little comment you made made me start thinking about it. Um, I, I, you know, a rubber roof's not cheap either, but. Um, it, it, I'm not so far against it that I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to to approve it as submitted, but um, I'm not going to make the the motion. I will I will err on letting the architects make the final motion on on what they what you guys want to kind of see. I guess I am confused because without those aluminum channels, the big battens then make it feel more residential. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what width you're talking about for um, the piece that's going to go between the boards. I mean, typical board and bat, you know, you're in that. Yeah, so those two, those battens um, are actually uh, trim pieces that, that James Hardy provides. I think they're two and a half inches wide. Yeah. Um, and again, the panel, there's no, there's no one panel that exceeds, um, I would say three, yeah. three and a half feet at the most. Um, so, really, the um, the engagement with the street and how you look at it at the on the street is is going to be important to you know get that proportions correct because you it is kind of right right at the sidewalk. Um, again, I I think the you know we were essentially working with the with the existing building and, and kind of what it was going to give us. Um, you know. Including the roof, the hip roof portion, I, I think, I think costs associated with tearing that off and putting a, a flat roof on or some kind of other more commercially built um, aft roof, again is is sending it down the wrong wrong direction from a cost standpoint. Um, so really, it's you know the, introducing the, the metal panel on the roof with the larger, the wider ribbed um, profile, um, the the wider paneling on the side. Um, breaking it up with the kind of the freeze board that runs around the entire um, the entire perimeter um, was just enough, I think, for us to kind of give it that commercial feel um, and not and not do. I mean, we've exhausted many different elevation schemes um, and always have come back to this kind of proportionate panel look as the as kind of the, the nicest, most appropriate for the. The surrounding context of, of the neighborhood, because we would like to associate ourselves with essentially with with the town street um, feel, and not necessarily the residential housing behind it, um, like it currently does. I don't. I don't understand the. If it doesn't look like an office building, people won't want to rent it as an office. Um, I think what you you've taken off the porch, you put on a more contemporary statement. The windows are not. You know, I wouldn't. They look more office building like windows and just having this really nice gray and white. I mean, to me, it looks like an office. That could be an office building. I'd, <laughs> I'd be interested in renting it. Uh, um, I don't know. Well, gentlemen, we need to arrive at a decision here at some point. Uh, well, this is Jackie. I mean, I'm just going to throw this out. Um, I'm not saying you, you need to do this or suggesting you should, but um, there, there's always, of course, there's always the conditional approval to approve the use and, and the parking and um, just request for them to come back uh, to reevaluate the, um, the siding materials if, if you want to. Just throwing that out as an option. I would be in favor of that. I think the, the skin needs to the discussion needs to continue on that. 
with that in mind, would we be able to submit for permits based on that or not? You would not. Okay. So, Jack, you can, if we you do can that, start the process, but you wouldn't be able to get a to actually get permits. So, yeah. That was they could start site compliance. Sure. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, just like the last project, this is a key intersection in East Franklinton, a McDowell and town, and you know it's going to be a prominent building. So, I think it needs to be right. It needs to fit in. And if I'm hearing. So, you, you effectively prefer a lap siding? I, I don't, I would, I think it looked, I mean, again, I think that's an option. We'd, we'd be willing to see what it looks like. I think to me, it would be fine. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in maybe it's that on the first floor and maybe the second floor is vertical. I don't know. Um, I'm open I, to I that. think you're on the right track with the vertical. I just, I, I think you could even have random battens. You could, you could develop, I mean, look at what's happening right across the street. They're doing this kind of random board and batten. You could have big panels and then apply the battens in some random system. I would personally get rid of the the white band that separates the first floor from the second floor, I think it's just too busy. But I, I think it could be really nice as this kind of random, it's like a gray curtain that go, yeah. goes around the, the building and then you get these these breaks where the windows are up as kind of cap. But I think you're on the right track, it just needs another another look. To me, it's the scale of the material, whether it's horizontal or, or vertical, it's getting it scaled right to make it feel that it fits with that building, the scale of that building. If it's, I'm sorry, it sounded like I was hearing it game being pulled in two different directions in regards to potentially large, large scale. That's that's all different configurations versus if, if we were to come back with the entire thing, basically being. Uh, a hardy board lap siding. Um, it, it sounds like that also would, I'm just trying to figure out so that we know which direction to be heading in. I'm not in favor of lap siding on this project. I think you're on the right track with a vertical look. I think it could be achieved with big panels that you then put the, the battens in front of those panels to disguise the fact that it's clad in large sheets of uh, hardy panel, smooth panel concrete board. So the, the battens are, um, they're a system that of your making, uh, the kind of random batten system. So I think it's, that's why I say, I think you're on the right track here, but the, you know, Kim is absolutely right that the vertical element it, the proportions of it as as it's proposed with the, the big gaps or the big spacing of the the panels it's it's a too the scale is too big for the structure right what now simply what if we simply cut the distance of the battens in half between them and double it up with that is that that's possible exactly. you need to show us yeah yes yeah. I just wanted to see if that's what I come back with some alternatives. Okay. Maybe just so yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? Jackie, can you repeat what you said earlier? Sure. Um, my suggestion was just basically motion to approve with the condition to return for board review and approval of the um, siting material and um, essentially, or it could be to return for approval of elevations if, if the board wants to continue the conversation for the elevations in general. That sounds good to me. The motion would be to approve the use and the parking and come back with new elevations. Second. Okay, that's it's been moved and seconded. Jackie, call the roll, please. 
I didn't get the second. I'm sorry. That was Kim. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Perkins. Approve. Dr. Box. Approve. Mr. Szymanski. Approve. Mr. Manfred. Approve. Mr. Overly. Approve. Mr. Way. Approve. Mr. Egner. Approve. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you soon. All righty. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Okay. We have one conceptual application. It is PF 21040004, a uh, variety of addresses here, 567 595 West Broad Street, 574 Shepherd Street, 582 A, 584 Shepherd Street, 19 Gift Street, and 25 Gift Street. The applicant is Arch City Development and the Oz Development Group. The owners are 567 Associates, Fred Workman, and the Katha Corporation, I gather. Uh, and we are reviewing a new 15 story mixed use building. Uh, Jackie, staff report, please. The site is located. Jackie, you're muted. <clears throat> we may have lost Jackie here. Understood. Bill, you want to read it? <laughs> uh, I'll give Jackie a minute, and if she can't get back on, she can, I'll read it. I'm here. Sorry, my call just dropped. I don't, I don't know what happened, <laughs> but uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, so it's bounded by West Broad Street to the north, South Gift to the east, Shepherd Street to the south and South Skidmore to the west. The applicant is proposing to demolish three structures on the site, including a one story commercial building at the northeast corner of the block, a, an existing motel at the northwest corner of the block, and a contributing single family home and detached garage south of the commercial building on the northeast corner. Three existing two story contributing commercial buildings will be preserved and incorporated into the proposed development and historic tax credits are being pursued or will be pursued, pursued for these structures. Um, the applicant is proposing a 15 story mixed use building, including three stories of new commercial space on West Broad Street on both sides of the existing contributing structures. A three story parking garage with 219 spaces with an amenity deck on top, an eight story residential tower oriented east west and a north-south oriented tower with 11 stories of residential space, um, totaling 206 studio, one and two bedroom units. Um, you know, these are a lot of, this, this is conceptual. So I just wanna say this is, you know, all draft information, but uh, we were told that um, approximately 60 to 70% of the units are being proposed to be affordable at 80 to 100% of the area median, median income. And the applicant could speak more to that if anyone has questions on that, because this is a conceptual review. Um, the 12th floor of the North South, North South Tower will be reserved for a rooftop signature restaurant. And there's estimated to be about 17,500 square feet of commercial and restaurant. Um, the proposal is generally consistent with the recommendations of the plan. Staff is supportive of the use and density as they are consistent with the plan's recommendation for the West Broad Street corridor. Staff is also supportive of the requested modification for an increase in height as the additional height will allow for the proposal to include a significant number of units to be affordable and allow three historic structures to be preserved. The location of the development on West Broad Street in close proximity to State Route 315 is also a mitigating factor for the additional height. The plan states that parking garages should be um, should include ground floor uses or be screened and that buildings exceeding five stories should provide at least one additional setback above the fifth floor. Um, it recommends street trees and contributing structures to be incorporated into new development. 
staff has the following comments. Um, we're recommending to activate the streetscape along Gift and Skidmore by lining the parking garage with townhomes um, or, you know, a retail or some other use uh, just to have some type of lining um, to preserve the existing single family home on Gift and incorporate it into the site design. Um, that could go along with potential townhomes on that street. Recommending a potential setback on the higher floor along Skidmore to provide some relief to the street frontage and neighborhood. And then also, of course, street trees along the frontages. Um, staff is not providing a recommendation on the parking reduction um, at this time, as there are many variables um, to the composition of commercial space, historic register listing, and including a, of affordable housing or remain to be solidified. Um, staff does recommend the applicant perform a parking study in the future to provide additional information to staff um, to review relative to demand and the need for proposed uses. And as it's currently proposed, the conceptual application would include a modification to the East Franklinton um, district standards to allow an increase in height from 60 feet to 166 feet. And there would be a request for a parking reduction as well. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Any questions for staff? If not, uh, if, will the applicant uh, representatives please, please identify themselves? Hi, I'm Brian Higgins with Arch City Development. Okay, you're breaking up a little, Brian, there. If you can try again. You can hear me more clearly now? That's a little better. Okay, I'm Brian Higgins with Arch City Development, and I am uh, okay. here alone today. You're alone? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes. Okay. Floor is yours. You'll probably have to get pretty close to wherever your microphone is. You're still kind of still kind of tinny there. Let me see if I um it is uh I think Jackie did a pretty good job explaining the situation. Uh, there's not a lot to add because this is very conceptual, so I don't have a good sense of materiality or anything to the to that degree. I can tell you a little bit more about affordability. We're currently projecting 23% of the units are affordable to households earning up to 80% of area median income. Another 55% on top of that would be between 80 and 100% of area median income. And then the remaining 22% would be affordable up to households earning 120% of area median income. So it's not affordable in a low income housing tax credit kind of way, but I think it's very much in line with uh, workforce housing affordability guidelines. I'm sure that was probably a question that you guys were going to have, so I figured I'd just uh, jump in there. It is our intent to preserve the group of buildings in the center of the block. Um, although, like a lot of buildings uh, of that era, they've had a number of additions. As you move south, we would want to just retain original building footprints. Um, then, you know, had, had some complimentary commercial space on either side of it. Uh, so the parking structure would begin behind that, sort of set back behind those existing buildings. And we, I imagine those would be, you know, some combination of office and or retail uses. No idea about tenancy or anything like that. Um, but, um, yeah, and then as Jackie mentioned, the top floor, Imagine some sort of rooftop amenity you know, in line with what you might see at Lincoln Social or uh, Smith Brothers or something, something to that extent, you know, um, views of downtown, drinks, light, uh, fair, that kind of thing. So those are the highlights. I'm happy to ask or, I'm sorry, answer any questions you may have and certainly looking forward to your input. Could you, could you speak a little bit about your intentions for the buildings that are staying that are on Broad Street? I mean, what are you planning on, like, going in and gutting those, re totally renovating them? Are you going to try to restore them to their original state, their historicness, or what's your intention? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that, a lot of that will be driven by our, our whether or not we're successful in acquiring historic tax credits. Um, 
So to the extent, you know, as you might imagine, they don't have a lot of original character remaining in the interior and, and they have some level of disrepair. I've not been in there with an engineer, so I'm uncertain you know, what I'm going to encounter. You know, to the extent possible, I would, you know, I don't know that we have to get to studs, but again, I, I can't tell you one way or the other, just having not been through there with uh, the, you know, the, the hired professionals. But the intention would be to retain them um, without a doubt, or is it sub to their structural stability and might they uh, at some point you say well I can't save it anymore I just need to tear it down I mean I've literally had buildings collapse on me when I was nowhere near on site so I can't tell you that they, they won't fall down but you know I would like to imagine that uh, that we can preserve them without uh, a whole lot of drama you just putting eyes on them I don't think they're in that level of disrepair uh, whereas I, I think they would have to be you know in other words, this is not a precursor to satiate you and later turn around and say that I can't save them and I intend to demolish them. Um, I imagine my intent is that, you know, there should be enough room in the budget to do this, especially if we were to successfully uh, acquire the state historic tax credits on top of the, the federal ones. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so you have you have this layer of historic buildings on Broad Street, and then my question is really about the the proposed massing. I I think that you know Broad Street can certainly support a building of this height, but to me the massing feels like it's not really. There's something about putting the taller building on the side street, it doesn't feel like it's fronting broad. Like somehow I, I, I feel like the, you know, if you have the layer of the historic buildings and then you're this idea of a, a roof scape, that would be something that would want to front onto broad street. I assume that's the, that's the terrace of the lower building that's up high, but I think there's also an opportunity to, to front Broad Street with with some sort of social amenity down low, you know, a kind of sky lobby for the residential pieces. Uh, so I I don't know. I'm just I I have a lot of questions about the general massing of the project. I guess. You know, I thought you know, I, I think it, it certainly could creep. You know, looking thinking about the current design. It certainly could creep all the way to Broad Street, which you know it doesn't doesn't really quite do. My, my challenge was how to deal with those historic buildings. You know, I, I didn't want to try to build on top of them, you know, or completely surrounding them. That, that provided some challenges that I, I was not um, interested in entertaining. So I, I don't know. I hear what you're saying, Bart, but I'm not sure, you know, how how to do that in its entirety. It's still um, not swallow up those historic structures. Well, maybe right. you don't save all of them. Well, that's you know? that's what I was just getting at. It was, are those historic buildings or are they just old? Um, right. I, I think there's well, a there's a difference. Uh, I mean, those are those are old two story buildings on Broad Street in what is essentially becoming more and more downtown. There there aren't a whole lot of old or historic two story buildings in downtown anymore. Um, I, I, you know, I would almost be in favor of pulling that, pulling that east west um, entire building out towards the front of the building and or out towards the front of Broad. And you know, if there's not, it's hard to tell from all of the renovations to your point, Brian, of these these buildings, but they sure don't look like there's significant historical value in these. They look like three old buildings that were, you know, on on Broad Street 75, 80, 90 years ago. And that's that's their only claim to fame. Just because they're old does not necessarily mean they're of historical relevance, in my opinion. It's the one on the east, actually, just one story. It, it looks like you're showing it as two story. But when you look at the photograph, it looks like a one story building. Well, with a the, the one that says tattoo. Yeah. That one is going to be demoed in, and it's a two-story commercial oh. space that'll be built in its stay. 
So that's a new component. Okay, I didn't read that. Yeah. Got so it. there's two story or two story or or lofted space for commercial and um, amenity entrance lobby on on broad that would flank both of those spaces. Brian, this is. Um, I mean, I know it's early conceptual, but this is a a much better feel of a project it's also bigger but it's a it's a much better project than than when you last came with you know a, kind of trying to squeeze in around a couple of houses on gift and um and this is this makes much more sense for a, a building of this massing appreciate that and you know i i assumed that retaining those uh buildings was important to the efrb and if, if it isn't as important it's maybe more important to, to mass along Broad Street. That's certainly something that, you know, we could really kind of flip flop these two sections of buildings where the taller one could go, you know, east west on Broad and the smaller one would go north south somewhere else, whether it's in the middle of the site again or whatever. Well, also, I think there's the opportunity of treating both of the side streets with some equivalence. And I, I think Jackie got at the, the idea of at least screening the garage, but I really feel like you could have a you could have a U-shaped building that could could give and maybe it even brings the scale of this building down a little bit. Um, but I, I don't know for some reason the the two legs kind of it. It sort of the massing of it feels like hospital bed tower right now, you know, like a, a, something about it just feels like there's one product. This is the site that you could do one, one, one project. It doesn't have to be the, the, the multiple elements. And, and I am very supportive of, uh, you know, evaluating the historical significance of those buildings. And it, it just, it presents all sorts of development problems for you. Uh, it, it sort of sounds like the Hampton Inn across the street from the convention center, which I don't think we want, you know, like that kind of pastiche of historic buildings kind of glommed into a contemporary building. So I, I think I would be very supportive of investigating that as a possibility. Can I weigh in here? Absolutely. Um, Bruce, the question has come up on these three buildings that they're wanting to save on Broad Street as to what historical significance they have. This is Mr. History, and he can tell you in a couple of sentences what their his, historical value is. Can you speak to that? Well, that Does he need to be sworn in? <laughs> Do you want to swear him in as a historical expert <laughs> yeah, or just well, listen to some chat? Yeah, and, 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 and you're, you're very faint, Judy, so if you can get, if you can get your speaker going a little, your, your microphone going a little better, that will be helpful. Okay, I'm not sure how to do that. Where do I do that? Actually, you're closer to it now, so... Okay, hey. so Bruce, get close. If you want to hear from Bruce, is my question. Sure, uh, Bruce. Uh, state your name, please. Bruce Warner, like a and, Warner brother. <laughs> yeah, let's just cue up Bugs Bunny. Okay, uh, do you swear or affirm that the uh, testimony you're about to give is true and accurate, to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes. Okay. Proceed. I know the uh, the big bike shop, that Fred's big bike shop, been there for many years. Uh, I've been around uh, in Franklin since 1958, and it's been there ever since, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's it's an old building. Uh, those three old buildings, it's probably the last of the old buildings in that area down there. Uh, that's about what actually was there before, I don't know. Uh, I, I always lived further west up towards Avondale, uh, but, uh, but the one, the big, and I know Fred bought those buildings down there, I think. Um, that's about all I know about the okay. buildings themselves. I just thought I'd grab him as he walked past, if that's all he knows. <laughs> the, well, I've the, the applicant might want to do more history. I want to say something else, though, while I've got the floor. The, the residents of Franklinton were very adamant in the planning processes that went along 
um, heavily paid for by the city to not have those skyscrapers more than five stories at the sidewalk. And I'll, I'll stick to advocating for that. I don't mind the rest of the chatter, but I sure don't want to see skyscrapers. This building will set the tone for that part of Broad Street, and pretty soon we'll have a canyon that looks like New York City. Good. Thank They're you. talking about uh, setting it I mean, back from the the street the street plane, so you'd have a. I mean, not speaking for the applicant, but the the historic buildings were a kind of part of a low plinth that then the the residential towers would be set back from broad. Yeah, I heard that, but I also heard somebody talking about tearing down those buildings so the building can come forward, and that's what I'm saying. No, no. Oh, uh, I see. Well, maybe it's new, uh, like a new low building comes forward. Okay, I do like so the idea of trying to save those historic buildings, if for no other reason than across the street from this is the um, Holy Family Church, which has been there more than 100 years. Next to that is the Harrison House, which is the oldest building ever here in Franklin County, still standing. Behind that is the land office that was um, Lewis, Lucas Sullivan's um, offices. There is historical stuff around here. And then behind this building, I think, is the location where the um, convent is going to build that beautiful little chapel. So keeping something old here would be great. So, so, I, so I would say, Judy, that you know, I, without knowing really how those buildings are going to be renovated and integrated into the project, it's very hard to assess their contribution. Yeah, I'm okay um, with it, that. It, I just wanted to throw yeah. that in as the context for the neighborhood. Yeah. That's all. I, I'm for saving them too if they can really contribute to that project. If they can't, right. I think they could right. actually they could actually create more of a problem. I think not only just from a construction standpoint, but just they might look they might look foreign to everything else. I, yeah, as an from, aesthetic, from an aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetic standpoint, pregnant. they would be very hard to very hard yeah. to keep without changing the with the aesthetic of the entire building. I think I've been around long enough now to have credentials as being pretty pragmatic. I, I would actually advocate that, that if, yeah. if they were, can I just finish? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. if, if they were to be demolished, um, and again, to Judy's point, not bring the building forward, but I would keep the space and make it a, an open space, a green space. And I would actually say the first levels of the floor of the parking garage that could be um, leasable space so that you have a, a, a like a pocket park that has you know a restaurant or something at, at the base of the garage and you have a place to come out onto on Broad Street. It's a pretty inhospitable uh, street right now and I think there's the future to you know to integrate these things to make it more of a people place. I I'm just done. wanted to jump in and just provide some clarity on the question of um, the historical value. So from a staff perspective, our, we actually did have the historic preservation officer, Jamie Goodman, look at these. And when they're looking at the historical value of a building, they're looking at um, how many changes have been made to the building to change the integrity of what it was when it was originally built. Um, so from his perspective, these buildings are still, um, they basically are still in condition that could be restored to a point where they can reflect the time period of which they built and were built. And so I just wanted to point that out that there are a lot of historic buildings that have been changed or modified to a point where they're really no longer representative of their time period. And in his opinion, these buildings are still representative of the time period they were built. And then the other thing I was just going to add, um, the staff in our historic preservation office, they actually really enjoy researching buildings. So if that's something that the board wants, I can definitely ask them if they can provide a little bit of history in the future. Um, and we could probably just email that out to the board as well. Here's where we find out it was Lucas Sullivan's watering hole or something like that. <laughs> is, that is that a good if thing, Bart? Way, gentlemen, I, this is rare, but I'm gonna weigh in here. Uh, so, and you know what I'm gonna talk about. So it's, it's it is, this is a presidential issue. We are, if we ever, if we approve a building of this magnitude, particularly without the historic buildings, um, I realize staff staff loaded in as much as they could here to uh, to distinguish this from any as a uh, as an exception to precedent. But uh, uh, particularly without the historic buildings, um, it's going to be difficult for us to ever 
deny uh, an application along Broad Street based upon the height of a building uh, within any within any sane reason again uh, because now we're now we're looking at now we're looking at at buildings that massively exceed the development standards on both ends of, of Broad Street uh, and so the next one that comes a block away uh, I think we're gonna have a rough time saying no so uh, I think we need to keep that in mind. I think staff needs to keep that in mind. My two cents. And, and the other the, the other factor about um, height is um, is the how many units do you have to build up affordable housing to make it work? And does that drive the the, the height of the project? Because you're trying to get a, enough critical mass to make it financially viable. Um, I, I I think we need to understand some of those issues too. Definitely a fact. I think if it's a three sided building, the, the height of this thing can come down a little bit. But I also, you know, I'll just say again, I think Broad Street, Broad Street all the way to I 70 can support and and should be able to support um, higher density on on West Broad Street if they're careful and and cleverly designed projects. I don't disagree with that part. I just have to point these things out. Absolutely. And and I have another a question for staff, um, Jackie. We you know the east the east west corridor study that's going on right now, and looking at making Broad Street into a major transit uh, thoroughfare is going to change the character of that street. And I think as that corridor study evolves, I think it would be good for the board to understand. How its recommendations impact East Franklinton? Is that something we can get some updates on as that work progresses? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that would be possible. I'll, I'll reach out to um, Justin Goodwin, who's the project manager on the city side, and find out when a good timing might be for a presentation on it. That'd be great. Can I weigh in with one little bit of history that's a little bit relevant, at least cute? Um, the name Gift Street was given to that street because Lucas Sullivan was trying to encourage people to build houses in Franklinton, and he gifted the lots on that street for people to, to, to live there. It was, a, it was a bribe to get them to live there. There's very few houses left on Gift Street now, certainly south of Broad, but there are still some north of Broad. Just a little bit of history. Thank you. Call it the gift. My thought quickly yep, was instead of the Mondrian. Okay, any Matt, what was that? Uh, my my things are going to be um, learning more about those historical values and the uh, uses of those properties. If the city folks like to do that, that'd be great to hear. Um, but my main thing is going to be the uh, east and west side of that development, not being walking along a parking garage. So the staff suggestion about some townhouses or something, maybe if it's not a residence, but something a little more creative than, you know, walking along there because as someone who lives in the neighborhood, I want to, you know, enjoy getting places on foot or a bike. So any other feedback for the applicant? I just want to jump in again really quick and say, I wonder, Brian, do you want to chat at all about the height relative to affordable housing? Because that was mentioned and I didn't know if you just wanted to comment on that. Um, there's a couple of things that are driving the height. Um, one is, you know, there are economies of scale, uh, as you might imagine. Two is the state you may have seen has a tax credit um, referred to colloquially as TMUD, and it's for buildings that are 15 stories in height. And so in order to be able to acquire that tax credit, it drives down the basis of the building, which allows us to maintain affordability in a way. So certain, to a certain extent, um, like with this work, if, if, you, if you ask me, would it work if it was like a, a story shorter or something? Yeah, sure. But um, 
but it's intentionally at this height to try to uh, take advantage of the, the state's tax credit. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Uh, what was the when you say the ta state's tax credit with the height? Did that does that also play in? You you had mentioned historic tax credits. Is is, is there a big benefit to saving those to the property uh, and to the project? Or if if it was deemed not essential historic buildings and you got new commercial space or a, or a pocket park in there and we're not having to work around those and and rehab those is that is that a detriment to you not really i mean sure if you get the state and the federal tax credits that's 45 percent essentially of your construction costs that you can recover in that credit uh, but these buildings collectively are pretty small so they're a small relatively small part of the project like together they're let me see here under 7,000 square feet. Um, yeah, it would be 45% of those three buildings rehabbed, right? It's not 45. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not, yeah. you're not getting 40% of your 15 story project. No, depending on what, you know, the Department of the Interior and everybody in the state makes you do, your, your costs may be higher than they would be on a traditional renovation project. Right. So you, you may not recognize quite as much benefit, although it's, um, you know, so. So no, to answer your question, it's not a huge deal. It's just another tool, which we certainly would take advantage of if that were the case, but um, it, does not, it, it doesn't really significantly impact the overall project. Ultimately, Brian, I'm, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great conceptual design that takes advantage of the kind of the entire block and, and uh, does a much, much better job of, of filling that space than, than the original did that was kind of carved out around a couple of small houses. Um, I do agree with some of the other board members about trying to bring the, the, the towers more oriented towards broad and, and up towards broad slightly, although I do agree with Judy on stepping it back a little and, and with Kim on keeping a, a bit of a pocket park and keeping it pedestrian friendly and not doing something that would be so so flat and tight to the to the right away that it, it would make it if you didn't go inside a space it doesn't offer anything from a pedestrian standpoint um but it's a i think it's a great uh conceptual design tj right. anyone else? I, I just to say i, I agree tj and this is the type of project that I think the East West corridor study really wants to see as it, as it thinks about growth in the region and, and building density along high speed transit corridors. So this is right, right in line with that. I think. Oh, I did want to add one other thing, Brian, about your, the parking garage in the back. I know that a lot of this stuff's just blocked out. Um, but, but I, I would think that it would be good to kind of capitalize on some of that if it's the if the roof of that parking garage isn't being parked on then that would be great green space for you know all of the residents there to look out over um possibly use um the the office space or the commercial space to the east of the historic homes looks like it has a, a blocked flat roof that could be usable um you're probably already thinking about that and talking about it, but I mean, it's, it's, that's good flat space that that wouldn't be very nice to bring in some soft uh, green space or, or uses. Yeah. We, we imagine that the roof of the garage um, being sort of an amenity deck, maybe there's a splash pad and maybe there's a place to let the dog out and all those kind of things, a barbecue, et cetera. So, yep. so definitely. Yep. Okay, anybody else? All right, well, I hope uh, we've provided you with uh, some guidance here. Appreciate you coming in. Okay, thank you. 
All right, let's move on. Uh, Jackie, uh, you are going to provide us with a update on the East Franklinton special parking area. Yeah, I know I'll try to keep this quick because I know we're, um, you know, past five already. Um, so I'll go kind of fast and then open it up for any questions. So we, um, we presented the special parking area staff did to development commission twice. Um, at the both at both meetings, uh, the primary concerns that the commissioners had um, were related to the impact of the fee and lieu process for small businesses, um, small restaurants. Um, so I think overall they were very supportive of it when it when we're looking at larger developments, but they were concerned about um, businesses that maybe needed a one space reduction and how that fee would impact them. Um, you know, this is. We reiterated, and I'll just say again quickly for all of you, um, that while there is that concern and we recognize it's a real concern, we don't want to impact small businesses in the area. Um, the special parking area, as it was previously drafted, um, it already provided a 50% parking reduction for all non-residential spaces. And um, it also provided zero parking requirements for single family homes, retail less than 2,500 square feet, artist workspace, artist gallery, and artist manufacturing. And then we also, of course, uh, built in the uh, additional parking reduction on top of that 50% off when um, a user was reusing a historic structure because we know that the historic structures oftentimes don't have space on site for parking, just like the single family home we were looking at today being turned into office. There's nowhere on the site to, to put a parking space. And so we, we've got that built in already. So we felt like we, we had a lot of the bases covered, but in order to respond to their concerns, um, we, we went back and looked at what are, other, um, what are other uses that really require fairly small amounts of parking where, where we might see these needs for just a one space reduction or a two space reduction. And how can we try to mitigate that need? Um, so what we're proposing to do is add uh, to the special parking area a zero space parking requirement for um, a restaurant use, which would be less than 1500 square feet, which was brought up today. And so that could cover a deli like we were looking at today, coffee shop, you know, any type of anything that falls under restaurant use. We're also looking to say um, zero parking for office and medical office, less than 2,500 square feet. We know we want to encourage um, office space and, and office. Um, these uses really have very small parking requirements anyway, based on the space requirements. And then we're also um, adding an additional one space reduction for two, three, and four unit homes. So a single unit home we were already proposing to be zero parked. And now a two unit home will only be required one space, a three unit home would be required two spaces, and a four unit home would be required three spaces. And this was really to try to um, help offset when we do have small developers coming in and just developing one or two lots versus a really large lot um, to give them a bit of a break. Um, so those are the changes and we're, we are gonna be going back to development commission, we'll be presenting to the commission um, the second Thursday in May with a goal of having a council public hearing set up uh, hopefully by the end of May. And then um, if that goes well, then we would be looking to take the legislation to council. So that's the update. We just wanted to make sure to, you know, Belka sent the email out. We were looking for preliminary comments as we were getting ready to go back to development commission, um, but also wanted to present and give you an opportunity to ask questions. Any questions? Here is not. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Uh, I'm yeah, going to you. read. I'm going to read into the uh, record our staff approved application, which is EF 2104001, 415 West Rich Street. The applicant's Brian Collins. The owner is CMHA, and the approval was the. Yellow Brick Pizza Outdoor Dining Patio. Uh, and with that, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Jack, if you give me a call, please, when we're done here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, thank everybody. You. See you next Bye. month. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.